For the labs, we are going to be using FET simulations. These are free simulations developed by the University of Colorado Boulder in conjunction with the National Science Foundation, NSF. And here's the website that you would go to to see it directly. Labs have been written for these simulations, particularly for this course by your instructor. These labs are designed to be parallel with the lecture material wherever possible, and they are very realistic in many ways to an actual lab situation. Sometimes they even give you a little bit more perspective. Technical setup. If you go to the technical setup folder of the in the content uh, tab itself, it will tell you how to download Java. And in particular, you would go to this website and, and do as they say to download the latest version of Java. They update it a couple of times a year. And also to download the latest version of Adobe Flash Player. For browsers, you could use Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari. It seems like Firefox seems to work the best. If you use Google Chrome, you will have to go through a complicated procedure in order to, for Java to work, if you can even get it to work. Um, I cannot help you there if, if that's your decision. Um, also, uh, Chrome disables Adobe Flash Player with every one of its updates. So to enable Adobe Flash Player, there is a procedure for that, which I do describe in a document in the technical setup folder for the labs. So here we are in the uh, lab folder of the technical setup. And you are already here since you're looking at this video. But if you go down just a little bit more in the folder, you have the Java download page. And you click on that, you, it will take you to the latest version of Java. And so if you want that latest version, you click on free Java download here. And you need that in order to run the FET simulations. So I just downloaded mine. It took me a couple minutes. And I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go back. And for some applications, you need the, the latest version of Adobe Flash Player. So if I download that, it takes me to, to the, the Adobe site. And it says Install Now. Maybe I don't want these other add-ons here. And I would just say Install Now for the latest version of Adobe Flash Player. So it would be nice to have that. If you have uh, Google Chrome, you will have to enable Adobe Flash Player in Google Chrome, so you would click on this to look at the procedure to enable Adobe Flash Player in Google Chrome. So, we've got the latest Java, and we've got Adobe Flash Player, and here's a test lab executable just to see that things are working. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm actually working out of Google Chrome right now, but this should open up my simulation in Firefox. So we'll see what happens here. I click on that. I'm going to keep this file. You're going to have to trust these files. So what I did was it opened up the file, but it didn't open it up in Google. And we'll open up here and see what we get. It's going to have to open up my Firefox. So here's the simulation, and um, it looks like it's ready to go. These are lifelike simulations. I can adjust this cannon like this. I can adjust its height by just pulling on this. Let's see, pulling this up, bringing it up like this. So adjust the angle here. I can adjust the initial speed of my projectile. Here's a measuring device. So if I put this in line with the cannon, I can measure how far away this target is. Looks like 16.67 meters, or I can move the target out further to 22.39 meters. And um, when I think everything is set to go, I can fire and see if I can hit the target. Looks like I'm going to miss. So let's try another angle here. And 
fire again. And that one is going to miss as well. So using calculus here, we'll go in between the two and fire here. And bingo, score. So uh, play around with the simulations, but those are the kinds of things that you're going to be able to do with these simulations. So once you get into each lab folder, there are a few things you're going to find there. One is a PDF print file, which is just a printout of the lab. Uh, nothing to input there, just so that you can follow and have a blueprint of where you need to go with the lab. There's going to be a Word file, which will be the same as the PDF print file, only this one, you can actually add things to this file. And that will be your main report for the lab. So you're going to use the Word file and answer any questions that might be in there input any data that you might need there and finish out your lab with that file. So you're going to fill in your responses, the data, and also write a conclusion. And there'll be four things in the, in the conclusion, which is uh, described in the lab itself. When you're done with your main report on the lab, you're going to save this Word file as a PDF file. So you're just going to have to go down the list of possibilities for your extension and select PDF for your save as. There's also an Excel file for some of the labs and that will be just an extra file for you to input data and get some results that you may be able to cut and copy into your Word file for the lab. And of course there will be a FET simulation for you to run uh, so that you can actually collect your data. So I just backed out of the lab folder and here I am in the technical setup and I wish to actually go into a individual lab. So I'm going to go back into the content and here in the content I have the chapters with all the uh, information of the course. I have the labs and the weekly quizzes and sample exams and so I'm going to go into this lab folder. And in the lab folder, I have um, all the labs for this course. And in particular, let's just look at lab number two here. So these are the four items that I would find in the lab folder if it had an Excel worksheet. I have the main document, which is just a, um, a resource for you to look at the full lab. You can't really input anything into it. This is just a... Uh, a blueprint for what you need to go through in the lab if you need needed that. Uh, let's get rid of this. So your actual document that you're going to be writing in is this main document uh, which will be a Word file. In this particular case it would look like this and you can actually write into this. Um, sometimes I have it um, so that your writing will come out in a red color so I know what you have written into the lab. And so you'll make your answers and fill in your data as you run the lab into this document, as well as write a conclusion at the end, which should have four things in it. Um, state, restate the purpose, state the main data values, state the percent error on those main data values, and state at least three sources of error on the experiment. If you have 0% error, you still have to state three sources of error on the experiment. Once you do all that, write your conclusion, all your data, then you're ready to submit this file, save this file as a PDF file. All right, let's go back to that folder. Um, Excel spreadsheet, if you click on that, here's the Excel spreadsheet for this lab. You would fill in your data here and get some results here. And you can possibly just highlight all of this, uh, cut and paste it into your um, lab document. This is for launch data at 60 degrees and this is for horizontal launch here. So that would go directly into your document. And here's the simulation. So you click on that and I'm going to keep it and open this. So that's going to take me into my Firefox and here's the simulation again. So uh, all these items are in each individual lab folder, the actual simulation, 
a document that you modify for submission and um, uh, possibly an Excel worksheet and the uh, PDF file that just gives you a resource for looking at the lab. So when you're done with the lab, you're going to submit it. Submit it with a name with the format of your last name, first name, and the lab number and save it as a PDF file. So if I were to submit this first lab, it would be goldmanjohn01.pdf. Attach it to a course email, which is a message, and send it to the instructor, me, John Goldman.